Now, if you're stacking anything but a very short stack, be sure to leave plenty of space on all four sides of the subject because the longer the stack, the more chance that some part of your subject is going to be truncated and lost. It's happened to me, I don't know how many times, tons of times. When a large stack is processed, more and more of the sides are gradually cut off. I have any number of really great photos that have been decapitated because I framed my shot too tightly using only the first layer as a frame of reference and not checking to see as I focus closer, deeper and deeper into the stack, how much of the edge is going to be lost by the framing. In other words, stack photos need extra room around the subject or you're gonna lose a lot of them. Another problem is if the background is too much in focus. If the foreground of the subject is busy and the background is also very busy and you have the foreground and background all in sharp focus, the foreground subject receives no relief and the whole image is too busy and it's hard for the eye to pick out the foreground from the background because it's too much detail. I mean, you can have too much detail in stacks. And this is totally easy to cure by only stacking the foreground and then deliberately not stack the last five or 10 layers that make up the background. Focus stacking is often more effective if we use it sparingly. Time consuming. Focus stacking like stitching or HDR and other macro techniques is generally not for everyone. For example, I'm always, I seem to always be in a hurry. So the tedium, the patience, and the complexities of stacking focus are perfect therapy for me. They slow me down to actual living, and I, I can appreciate that. But many people just don't want to bother with this uh, or try to deal with such painstaking technique, and they don't benefit from the patience required. Maybe they already know about patience, but for me, this is a good way to learn patience. Also, these photos take up a lot of disk space. Focus stacking is a real memory hog. And if a hard drive capacity, storage capacity is a worry for you, and you have like 15 or 20, 36 megapixel raw files from a D800E, and you need to convert them into resulting 220 megabytes each TIFF files, that's a lot. Multiply that by a day's work and you're taking real storage. Luckily, storage has come down in price and gone up in size from my first home computer back in 1977, which had a total of 8K of memory. And then you have to back it all up. So you get the idea. Focus stacking carries a price in patience and in equipment. And not everyone likes focus stacking. They, either the idea, you'd be surprised at how many people on different forums just don't like the idea on site. It's, you know, they're biased. Or, prejudice against it and they don't like the results or, or, or anything about it. It's been for years like this and I'm in a perfect position to appreciate why you might want to just skip over this technique. However, um, I can't seem to do that so I will spare most of you my usual pitch about no matter where we look with our eyes everything is in focus. That's part of the appeal of focus stacking. After a number of years of practicing this technique, it's so ingrained in me that I am actually uncomfortable if at least a certain amount of the photo is not in focus. I am taking some corrective phototherapy and practicing at the traditional single shot photos once again, but focus stacking for me is a hard habit to break. Also impressions, uh, impressionistic, I, I will not dwell overly on my observation that all photography is impressionistic, since that seems to raise the hackles of any number of photographers. Stacking photo is a real quick lesson that we are indeed just sampling what we see. We're creating an impression. Any of you who do post photo shoot Photoshop work should know by now that photos are impressions like any other graphic art form, but I won't argue it here. It is the human mind that's impressed, and it is the photo that does the impression. Enough said. 
In summertime, I'm not much for studio work when it comes to stacking photos. I like to think of myself as an outdoor photographer most of the time. I do have a studio and I do use it, use it, but it's mostly when it's too windy or too cold to be outside. And I don't tend to do real microscope, what we would call micro photography, um, or even ultra, ultra close-up shots of any kind. I know how to stack with lenses, but I don't enjoy that higher level of magnification we find in microscopes. I'm all about creating images of complete little mini worlds, what I call uh, micro landscapes or dioramas, outdoors if possible. I've got a, another little observation. Years ago, I traveled relatively far to get my shots. I would pack up the car and head out here or there for an all day or half a day trip. It seems I was always after this or that and going here and there. And I must confess at that time I was something of a, a gotcha photographer. In fact, I can graph my transition over time from going far away to now always near home as a kind of ever converging spiral ending up right at my front door or very close to it. It would be wrong, or at least a cheap shot, to say that it's just because I'm getting older. Sure, that, that plays a part, but it's not a great one. My enthusiasm, my enthusiasm for this or that would get me as far as I had a mind to. And the way I explained it to myself is that my eye for beauty has developed over the years, where before I had all kinds of expectations all kinds of demands about what I wanted to shoot, exactly what was cool or beautiful and what was not, and that my punishment was that I had to drive all over hell and back to keep face with myself. That position has not only softened, it actually has changed. For whatever reason, everywhere I look now is filled with beauty. I find good photos all around, but it's my eye for beauty on, on a given day does get tired after an hour or two, and that's when I know it's time to head back and process some stuff. And beauty begets beauty. If I'm inspired by a flower or something, often this happens in the process of taking photos uh, of, of some scene, my eye for beauty becomes enhanced. In other words, my eye for photos expands on inspiration and suddenly I begin to see the beautiful in almost everything around me. And if I shoot that inspired beauty, it holds up in the resulting photos over time. They are good shots. However, what's incredible to my eye is not necessarily so for yours. I can remember one poster on a popular forum who looked at what I considered a, you know, a wonderful flower shot and replied, it looks like a picture of a flower to me. So there's no accounting for taste. I've learned to please myself and others I hope will do the same. There is some truth to the old maxim, touch one, touch all, in that if you can move yourself, often others are moved too. One piece of advice that I have for myself is just to get out there in nature. Almost any excuse for a camera is enough to get started. Just getting out in the crisp early morning summer air with or without a camera is worthwhile. For me, often the camera is just a pretext to get outside, to feel the air and fog on my skin, smell the fields, watch the sun come up and, and uh, see the sunlight kind of filtering in. If I can't experience things like this along the way, I have no idea what the goal of life is about or just where I might be heading to. Anyway, my goal in those early mornings is just to be there. If you don't have a camera, just go out without one and look at the world close up. That's at least half of what it's all about for me anyway. Of course, if you have a camera, any kind of camera, that's better. It sure doesn't matter what your photos look like in the beginning. I did not start caring about my photo results for some years. 
In the beginning, it was the experience of seeing nature close up. See, seeing it through the lenses, that, that's what captivated me. The quality of my photos only improved much later, so the photo result should not be your goal when you begin. At least, that's my thought. Let's talk about focus stacking software. The focus stacking software that I have found to be most convenient are Zerine Stacker, another one's called Helicon Focus, and then trailing way behind is something called Photoshop CS6, although I think that Photoshop can stack from CS4 on upward. And in that order, these all work more or less well. Photoshop 6 is a great improvement over uh, CS4, but the program is still not ready for prime time as regards focus stacking, and that's really an understatement. Both Zerine Stacker and Helicon Focus work well, and both are available in a demo version, so you can check it out for yourself. Just try them. A word of advice, I would not consider either the student or the 32-bit versions from either company if you value your time. You really want to have the 64-bit versions, and that means they're professional versions and they're more expensive. Of course, if you have a 32-bit computer, you have no choice. By all means, anyway, get the 64-bit versions, which are expensive. It's like 289 bucks for Zerine Stacker and 250 bucks for, from Helicon Focus. I have tried and purchased both of these packages and have done, relatively speaking, a lot of focus stacking. Both companies have fine software. That being said, my personal preference is very much with Zerine Stacker, and I have a couple of reasons. Actually, I have a lot of reasons, but there are a couple of main reasons. One is that the retouching feature in Zerine Stacker is very much better than that you'll find in Helicon Focus, at least in my opinion. And the farther you go into the field of stacking focus, the more retouching is the name of the game. And the reason is simple. Focus stacking is a sampling technique, much like digital music CDs sample or DVDs. You're sampling from an analog base or a digital base. By definition, all samples are, are just what are just that. They're samples, and that means something is also not sampled, something is left out. In the case of focus stacking, what's left out tends to cause unwanted artifacts to appear, and these artifacts detract from and can even ruin a stack photo. So as much as I originally resisted retouching any stack photo, over time I have accepted that it has to be done. After all, most of us accept quite easily that we have to fiddle with white balance and other factors in post-processing. Retouching is the same idea. Therefore, a very easy to use retouching method can be found in Serene Stacker. So it's, it's, it's worth a lot to me. And they really have come up with a brilliant solution. My second reason is, is that the support and handholding from the Serene Stacker staff is exemplary. And I've been in the software business for a long, long time. Uh, on the internet, my company's only second to Microsoft, although we're a lot smaller. So, and I've run a software company full time. I'm sure that other companies also have good support. But these days, you pretty much have to pay for Adobe support, so I won't go there just now. So, you know, download these programs, try them for 30 days, and find out what what brand you like. Um, some things that are good for me about focus stacking and I guess that macro and close-up photography in general, it's a slow process, but it's ideal for those of us who need to learn more patience, and I'm one. If done well, stacking photos can slow me down until I'm forced to experience more of just the present moment. For many of us who are busy and we think too much, this is a good thing and it's a respite. It's the best medicine that I know of uh, for my own busyness. It's also physically the perfect exercise for older folks like I am. 
What else would possibly induce me to get up and get down and get up again, now get down on my knees, now bend over, now on my side, now on my stomach? You could not pay me to do that. Uh, uh, to get the exercise that I naturally get when I am motivi motivated by this or by that wonderful shot, it's especially good for the abdomen, all the holding of the breath, the keeping perfectly still, maintaining a pose, and so on. It's all good.